Good evening, you're watching The Nation at Nine. A U.S. Navy veteran has been arrested for allegedly killing an Indian immigrant engineer and wounding two others at a crowded sports bar. Now, Adam Purinton is accused of killing Srinivas Kuchi Bhotla and wounding his co-worker Alok Madasani. The accused was arrested in Missouri after he told a bartender that he had shot two Middle Eastern men and needed a place to hide. A third man, Ian Grillet, was also shot when he tried to stop the gunman at Austin's Bar and Grill in Ulote, Kansas. Kuchi Botla and Madhusani were both of Indian descent, working as engineers at GPS Maker Garmin International in Kansas. Now, Senate Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj has condemned the U.S. shootout incident. Taking to Twitter, she wrote, and I'm uh, quoting her now, I'm shocked at the shooting incident in Kansas in which Srinivas Kuchi Botla has been killed. My heartfelt condolences to the bereaved family. But this incident has raised questions that go far beyond an Indian national being killed. Imagine this has been going on for a while now. The President of the United States is someone who has been talking about uh, how immigrants have impacted not just the economy but the social ethos of that country. The fact that the shooter in this case mistook these two Indian uh, individuals for Middle Eastern and shot them in a fit of rage also points to how white supremacists and white nationalism has made an ugly and shot them in a fit of rage also points to how white supremacists and white nationalism has made an ugly comeback in the United States which Donald Trump's head uh, Trump heads right now the big question is it's not just about Indians being killed the atmosphere of fear that Trump's presidency has brought to the United States is a matter of concerns not, not concern not just for Indians but anyone who's a non-white individual in the United States of America, any minority, any immigrants, be they Mexican, Middle Eastern, Muslims, uh, or even Indians in that matter, are now living in fear. We've been warned about this. We've, we've seen uh, uh, incidents like this spike ever since Trump became president. And India, of course, is only talking about it because two Indians have been killed today. One, of course, has been killed. One has been injured. What about the millions of others? who happen to be non-white? What about the Mexican immigrants? What about the Muslims who've been demonized by the Trump regime and time and again uh, been made uh, uh, the, the other, if you will, in Trump's narrative of what he considers to be great America? We'll take a look at the story first. We'll come back to the very serious issues facing America right now. We will bring back our jobs. Where are you from? We are from India. Oh, great. That's wonderful. Thank you very much. That's all I need to Bob. I will build a great, great wall for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. We will make America great again. Nine shots fired in a Kansas bar. And a pall of gloom descends on this Hyderabad home. 32-year-old Srinivas Kuchi Botla shot dead in cold blood in Donald Trump's America. The person has done some racist remarks saying that get out of my country. And my brother and his friend were only the persons whom he was targeting. Srinivas' only fault, the color of his skin. Adam Purinton, now in police custody, has been charged with first-degree murder and attempted murder. Purinton reportedly yelled, get out of my country before opening fire which killed Srinivas and injured Alok Madasani and Ian Greert. But US authorities are reluctant to divulge details at this stage. The motivation um, of this case and the facts surrounding it, uh, you gotta remember we're less than 24 hours in. Survivor Greert recounts the horror. When he first started firing, fired nine shots, expecting his magazine to be empty. So I got up and proceeded to chase him down, uh, try to pursue some deal him so that way the police can come in and do what they need to do. But what explains this mindless violence? Rights group Amnesty International had as much to say in its report only this week. Politicians wielding a toxic, dehumanizing us versus them rhetoric are creating a more divided and dangerous world. If it is classified as a hate crime, it can be prosecuted as a federal crime, not just uh, subject to the state laws. Uh, so that makes it, uh, that, that, that makes the investigation more seriously focused. But even as some leaders increasingly employ toxic words to meet their political objectives, 
there are also reasons to not lose heart. I was just doing what anyone should have done for another human being. It's not. Bureau Report, Newsex. Immigrants living in fear in Trump's America, that's been a recurring theme really, especially in the American media. Now, of course, we are talking about it because two Indians have fallen prey. Remember, the man who shot uh, uh, Srinivas shouted, get out of my country, just before killing Srinivas Kuchi Botla. Uh, it's not just a question that concerns Indians living and working in America. It also concerns anyone who, and I'm going to be very blunt here, is not white in America. Let's talk to Pramit Pal Chowdhury, foreign affairs editor in the Stan Times. Uh, he joins me in the studio. Vivek Karchu, former secretary of the MEA, joins us from Delhi. Stefania Cajero, she um, is working, in fact, she's studying in JNU, she's studying international politics, also joins us. Harish Bijur, the brand consultant, uh, joins us from Bangalore. Sanjay Puri, chairman of Houston PAC, uh, is joining us through Skype. And Zinia Diwan Bell, uh, she is with us. She's a blogger. Uh, Indian, of course, living in the U.S. Thank you all uh, for being with us. Pramit Pal Chaudhary, I'd like to start with you. We were warned about this. Uh, although uh, I don't uh, normally agree with the politicians in India, and one of them, of course, I won't name him, said uh, at one level this has also got to do uh, with the limited understanding of the particular um, individual who shot these two uh, uh, about uh, uh, immigrants and about people living in, in his country, uh, as he called it. He's, of course, also a Navy veteran. He might have served time in the Middle East as well. But at, at some level, do you agree with that politician when he says uh, the president or the leader of the country, the head of the state or the head of the country or the government is responsible for creating an ethos, really, in which, uh, under which these crimes are committed? I mean, statistically, we have pretty clear evidence of this. Um, the Southern Poverty Law Center um, and the New York Police Department, in fact, both issued uh, comments, uh, statistics, um, soon after Trump was elected, indicating there was actually a spike in, in what are called hate crimes in America uh, in the roughly 10 days after Trump was elected. And that has happened before uh, when right-wing people have been elected. And generally speaking, we have a situation where a group of individuals believe that the election of a president uh, from the right means that their, their own positions, their prejudices against either immigrants or Jews or so on, um, are uh, therefore legitimized mm -hmm. and therefore you see a spike in action Then normally what happens is the law and order process kicks in and they get arrested and some get uh, detained and after a while it sort of dies out even that's also happened in the case of the Trump administration we've seen it die out but there's been very clearly uh, at one slight difference uh, which is which has been uh, pointed out is that traditionally Republican presidents come out strongly against these actions now, Trump has called upon his supporters to stop it, as he said, when the mm. first few attacks happened. But as you said, the environment that he's created, where he's taken a very strong anti-immigrant stance, a very strong anti-Muslim stance, um, has obviously continued to feed into a set of other issues, including unemployment, anti-immigrant sentiment, uh, which means that the level, while the level has spiked, and it has now fallen back. It has fallen to a slightly higher than normal level uh, of anti-immigrant or uh, uh, hate, hate crime activity. Would you agree with that, Vivek? Can't you that assessment that, yes, there was a spike, but Trump, uh, in his words, asked his supporters to, quote, unquote, stop it. Uh, but it doesn't really work that way. The kind of sentiment being whipped up or was whipped up during his candidature, during the campaign rallies that we saw, uh, he, of course, almost behaved like a street bully uh, in his uh, road to the White House. He still does, according to many uh, 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 watching and observing uh, what's happening in American politics right now. But do you agree with the, what Pramit Pal Chaudhary says? It is at one level not just about the anti-immigrant feeling or the anti-immigrant paranoia in the U.S. There's an argument perhaps there for gun control, but that's a completely different issue right now. There was Go ahead, Vivek, Arju. There was hope that uh, after, yes, there was hope that as president-elect, he will try to uh, reconcile differences, but that hope has been belied. And after assuming the presidency, his, uh, his executive order on immigration 
again assassinated divisions within America. Uh, now, one cannot directly correlate every uh, incident uh, of hate crime to the president uh, and his actions, but the fact is that uh, Trump has done nothing as yet of where he is trying to, despite his good words, stop this, etc., but he has done really nothing to heal the divisions within America, and that is evident from the kind of press reports that are coming out, that is evident from what we are seeing uh, in, in the American political class and also to some extent in the American, uh, in the American academia. So uh, there is a climate which I think uh, Trump will have to take cognizance of because otherwise you ca he will realize that or he will preside over a country which, which continues to be deeply divided. At the end of the day, he is the president of all America and all Americans and he cannot cater only to his own uh, limited constituency, uh, which the composition of which we know. Well, that's, that's of course, uh, I, I agree with that in part, but the fact is Trump has time and again even questioned uh, uh, facts. He's been lying throughout even after becoming president. I'm using my words very carefully here. The American media, even uh, 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 the right uh, uh, facts. He's been lying throughout even after becoming president. I'm using my words very carefully here. The American media, even uh, 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 the right wing media, the left wing media, or even uh, the middle of the road uh, uh, media, or what other people in the U.S. call the CNN, uh, have been completely up in arms against uh, the kind of uh, alternative facts or lies in common parlance that the Trump administration has been rolling up. But that's again, uh, I, I digress slightly. I want to go across uh, to the Houston back chairman, Sanjay Puri, and uh, try and gauge the level of fear uh, or the atmosphere, really, that immigrants especially are now living in, considering, Mr. Puri, uh, the fact that Indians... Uh, uh, were uh, one particular, or Indian Americans were one particular segment of society that Trump expressed a lot of love for uh, during his candidature. Has this incident kind of dented that image that Trump is a friend to all Indians? To keep in perspective uh, that uh, President Trump probably uh, expressed his love for India for Indian Americans. But the level of ignorance sometimes uh, of the people who are committing this act, not that we should condone any kind of hate crimes. This person talked about that he had attacked two Middle Eastern people when he uh, went to a bar. So uh, their uh, definition of Middle Eastern, Indian, or Sikhs or others is a very widespread uh, connotation. Uh, you know, the, the perspective as you talk about the hate crimes, when you look, work, live in a big city like New York or you live in a city like Washington or San Francisco, those are really uh, uh, melting pots of all nationalities and all backgrounds. But when you go to places like Kansas City or go to smaller towns, uh, you kind of stand out. And I think there, the challenges become much, much harder for immigrants because they become uh, standing out out there or they become targets. So I think what happened in the campaign uh, grew and exploded. And now you can't put the genie back in the bottle. Uh, the Trump campaign has taken the genie out. And even if they issue all kinds of statements, it's going to be hard to put the genie back in there. Well, I agree completely with your last statement. The genie is out of the bottle. It's going to be extremely difficult to put it back. You cannot put toothpaste back into the tube. Uh, now, I want to go to Stephanie uh, Kajero for a bit here. Stephanie, how do you see this as somebody who's living in a country which is not really your birthplace? Uh, and how do you compare uh, your experience with the experience, the immigrant experience in America right now? Things are very volatile. It's a very divided country, uh, uh, the U.S. is right now. And uh, there seems to be a resistance, of course, not just political, but also a sort of public resistance against the kind of policies uh, the Trump administration is rolling out, the way they're rolling them out right now. And does this not also, uh, to those who said his stance against Muslims was completely justified or Islamic radical terror, as he calls it, don't you think the pitfalls of creating such a, an atmosphere of hate or demonizing an entire community uh, has a side effects, so to say? And what are the side effects we saw today? Very unfortunate one. Yes, 
course, of course. It's actually what you just said. Uh, actually, this Trump policy, he actually made it clear since his campaign. It was just being against these migrant people that they were already living in U.S. And it was actually these people that were following Islam. And it's just actually really disappointing because these people, they actually gave the trust to U.S. They actually trust so much in U.S. to work there, live there, work there. And what are the results now? The results of like this making America great again is this. The result of people getting killed, people getting treated because like nowadays, like people in America, they just feel this hate inside that they feel free to treat them people. No matter if they are Indians, they don't matter if they are Latinos, they just don't care. So it, uh, it was actually a really, really uh, bad strategy, you know, like yeah, but talking it worked about Trump, like it? campaign strategy. Uh, it, it worked because for Trump, and that's Trump, what I'm trying to highlight here. This is, like, this is, okay. uh, th that worked for Trump in the election, that's what got him elected, although he lost the popular vote. Now, I want to go across to the blogger who's joining us right now, Zinia Devan. Uh, first off... It was his campaign strategy. Yes, absolutely. That's what I'm saying. Zinia Devan, uh, has this shocked Indians living in uh, uh, the U.S.? I'm not just of talking course. about the big cities, uh, the, the East Coast cities or even L.A. for that matter. There are many uh, persons of Indian origin or Indian descent who are working in middle America, so-called middle America as well. Uh, places like Austin, Texas has a large Indian population uh, and many other cities like Kansas. Do you believe this could perhaps get out of control or even get, we could see a spike uh, uh, yeah, in, in such cases. Hold on, Stephanie, hold on. Give me a second. Their, like, Stephanie, hold on. The, the question is for Xenia. Go ahead, Xenia. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to get out of hand, but there is ever since... Excuse me. There are actually all these people... What, ever what, since what? Trump like, has come to power... I'm sorry. Yeah, Xenia, yeah. please go ahead. Please go ahead. Yes. Ever since Trump has come to power, there's, there is definitely this fear, and especially after his ex executive ban, even though it was overturned, it... There is this fear amongst the Indian community, especially the ones who are here on visa, who are here on green cards, on whether or not they can go back, and Indian Muslims as well. So many of them work in the IT industry in, within varied fields in science and technology, and so many of them fear not only for their lives, they fear whether or not they can go back home to see their families. If uh, on return, will they be detained? Will they be deported? There are There is definitely this fear within the Indian community, and it's largely because of Trump and the uh, the atmosphere he's created, um, um, the atmosphere of intolerance he's created within this country. And it is very disheartening to see this because this is a country that has, that has welcomed Indians for, um, I would say, half a century. And Indians have succeeded here and done so well for themselves. And now to see all this happening, it's very disheartening, it's very sad. And I live in the state of Ohio, which is a Republican state, and here bearing arms can be done with limited restrictions, very limited restrictions. So that adds on to the fear. That makes me more fearful. That makes me more fearful for my family, for myself. Um, I, I want to tell you an incident which happened to a friend of mine in uh, New York. She was exiting a station and she had a scarf around her head and she was called names and she was abused because people assumed that she was Muslim because she had a scarf around her head. Um, that is very scary. That is a very scary situation. Harish Bijur, we are, what we are looking at right now, uh, many would say it's a cautionary tale uh, uh, in, in, uh, in the sense that uh, there are many in India who thought that President Trump was the best thing that could have happened uh, in India's fight against terror. Very slowly, the Trump administration is not only unraveling, but also we are seeing a white nationalist, an avowed white nationalist working in the White House who, believe, who people believe is perhaps the most important, the most powerful person in the Trump administration. We were warned about this. Are we really surprised this has happened today? Yeah. No, I'm not surprised. But I really hope that, you know, it is not what is being painted out as today or anything that we're discussing around in this program. Uh, because, you know, uh, listen, I'm really hoping uh, that this is an act of a madman in Texas. Because enough numbers of countries have enough numbers of madmen and aberrations happen. I'm really hoping and praying it is that. However, you know, the key issue, which is Indian, is this. Uh, you know, we Indians are a myriad set of people. Uh, we can look like anybody. 
Uh, I can look like, a person from India can look like an African. A person from India could look like a Chinese, can look like a Middle Easterner, like it happened in Kansas. So that is our problem. Now, if people in the United States are going to ask uh, or say, get out of my country, I think that's dangerous. Because I'd like to ask, whose country is it anyway? In any case, the United States of America is a nation of immigrants. Then are we going to come to this issue of saying first-gen immigrant, second-gen immigrant, third-gen immigrant? I think Donald Trump needs to suck this issue out. He needs to stand up on the ramparts and say, hey, guys, the elections are over. Governance is in, and I think we need to talk of a united, United States of America rather than a divided uh, United States of America. Oh, Stephanie, and, I believe wants to come in here. and I would personally be against polarization because it is against the spirit of the United States. Stephanie, could yeah. you know, yes, go ahead. Exactly. Please. Yeah. I was, I, I was just uh, wanting to point out, uh, I'm actually agree with all this. Uh, the issue is just like about like these migrant people that live already in U.S. For example, it could be an Indian, it could be an Alti a Latino, and I, I actually want to share like this story. Like I don't know like if you guys like see two days before, like there was like these police people in Texas also. They were like pointing with a gun to five years old kids. There was like these police people in Texas also. They were like pointing with a gun to five years old kids, Latinos. I don't know from where, but they were Latinos. So what's going on? This like making America great again of Trump is just like actually causing this. It's just like making well, people it's definitely, well, well, I agree like with your broader fear. point. I, I also want like to go nobody into... Nobody can feel yes, safe yes. anymore in America. Uh, give me a second now. Give me a second now. Pramit Pachur, let me come back to you right now. Um, the fact that, uh, as Harish Bajur put it, it could, it could be, and we are hoping it is, the act of a madman in Kansas. He, of course, is an army veteran. Uh, sorry, a Navy veteran. Mm -hmm. But there are many uh, uh, in America uh, who voted for Trump only because he made sure that the fear of the other was center stage. Uh, in American politics. Are we really surprised that these incidents are coming out? This time it's an Indian American uh, that's been targeted, but there will mm -hmm. be more. There will be Middle Eastern, Arabs, Persians, uh, Mexicans, what have you. Th this will happen, this will continue to happen. Well, again, I think as Mr. Kachuk correctly said, it's very, it's important to make a he distinction like between connecting wrong. He was connecting actually with like the, following um, Stephanie, a politics strategy. Uh, 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 please, uh, allow, allow the other panelists to go on. I'll, I'll come to you when I have to go ahead, Pramit. Yeah. Um, there's a difficult to make a direct correlation between President Trump's election and incidents. We do know, as I said, statistically, there has been, there was a spike after he was elected, and even though the spike fell, it fell to a slightly higher level of hate crime incidents uh, since Trump's election. So we assume. Now, it's interesting that uh, the statistical website 538 actually sat down and did one of the most detailed studies of trying to find the correlation between Trump support, elections, uh, so on and so forth, and hate crimes in America. And what they found is that the strongest statistical correlation, not the only one, was actually income inequality. Mm. In other words, wherever income inequality was high, the likelihood of hate crimes after Trump's election Spike. was actually spiking, yes. Yeah. So you had a combination of race, anti-immigrant sentiment, and class. In other words, working class mm. people mm. who had resentments already there were now letting them out because they felt they had a president in America who was legitimizing that kind of activity. All right. Uh, Mr. Sanjay Puri, would you agree with that, that this is not just about race? It's, a, it's, a, it's an amalgamation of uh, working class uh, angst uh, as well as a, a bit of uh, race relations uh, thrown in with uh, a lot of insecurities. And what, uh, uh, what is your organization, first of all, going to uh, do about this? Are you going to campaign? Are you going to canvass uh, the Trump administration? Uh, is there uh, at all a scenario, Mr. Puri, where uh, the White House will come out and uh, put an end to this, or try and put an end to this, uh, at least by coming out and speaking to their supporters on the ground and saying, that, look, this is not on? Uh, I think uh, Pramit made the right point. There is an economic fear. And uh, economic fear always looks for a scapegoat. 
as to why my condition is the way it is. And I think immigrants are becoming one of the scapegoats in a changing economic setup in the United States. So when you go to states like Ohio or you go to West Virginia, where the jobs have been decimated, uh, you have people who are obviously wondering about their future and looking for uh, scapegoats. Now, as far as what we are doing is we are not just talking to members of Congress, but we are talking to the Department of Justice, which is really where the onus lies in terms of pursuing this crime with the FBI as a hate crime. So we are working with them, and we are also uh, talking to them about further vigilance and how the community can engage with them to make sure that this stops and does not happen. Uh, all right, Vivek Arju, uh, one of uh, Vivek Arju, one of the most uh, important aides in the run-up to the presidency to Mr. Trump was uh, uh, was Mr. Shalab Kumar. Uh, he of course heads uh, an organization in the U.S. and he of course was big on on, on uh, calling what Trump calls radical Islamic terror and the fight against Islam or radical Islam. Uh, you know, the the shooter today thought that these two Indians were Middle Eastern and uh, by association I would assume Muslim as well. Don't you think at some level there's a lesson here? that uh, by painting an, an entire community with a very broad brush, uh, collateral damage, unfortunately I have to call it today, will continue to happen. And this is going to come and, and, uh, and hurt us, Indians, no matter what religion, what community. Now look, uh, there have been incidents before Mr. Uh, President Trump assumed office or even before... Uh, may I... Stephanie, the, the question is for Vivek. Can I, Arju, please. Can go, I go on? Go ahead, Vivek. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, before President Trump had resumed office, even before the campaign, when uh, there were incidents against Indians uh, by and many of them who were non-Muslim Indians, uh, there was a by uh, because the the perpetrators felt that they were uh, that they were Muslim. So this is not the first time that such a thing has happened. However, the, uh, the significant point is that the, that the kind of atmosphere which the campaign generated has contributed to augmenting uh, the possibility that these kind of incidents can take place far more. Now, Indians in America will have to exercise vigilance. And I also, uh, they'll, have, they'll take heart from the fact that a majority of Americans do not support this kind of activity. And that President Trump is being combated on this point of uh, divisiveness or he, uh, on trying to fan Islamophobia, though he himself has been careful to say that he's not against Islam but against uh, uh, but against violent extremism, uh, which he says he will, which he said in his, I think, inaugural address that he'll wipe out from the face of the earth. So all this talk now uh, has precipitated certain situations, and uh, uh, the Trump administration will have to take uh, uh, care uh, that things are brought under control. Uh, Zinia Divan, uh, you of course blog about a lot of things. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming you'll write about this unfortunate incident as well. Uh, well explain to me, or try and, try and give me a sense really of uh, how widespread this is. And do you agree with the, uh, with the analysis that Pramit Pal Chaudhary just uh, gave us a, a sneak peek into that there was a spike immediately after Trump became president, there was a dip as well, and uh, this might just be uh, one of those instances uh, where uh, a deranged man uh, an ill-informed man, an ignorant man, just went off his rocker, as the Americans say, uh, and ended up killing a man. Uh, we also saw the beauty of American democracy, where yet another man, Ian Grillet, uh, tried to stop this attacker and got injured in the process because, and his very words were that we're all humans. Nobody has the right to kill anyone because they live, dif they look different or have a different skin color. I, I agree with that, Arthur, and I, I don't... I I don't know if there is going to be more such incidents. We can look at this as an isolated incident, definitely. But I want to ask this question, how can you tell us apart? How can you tell us apart? How can you tell people My point of exactly. color apart? Um, how can, I'm, I'm not a Muslim, but how can you tell me apart? Like, 
from looking at my name no you will not be able to so there there is obviously this fear in everybody um whether or not you know you whether irrespective of your race your color your faith you you cannot tell two people who are of the same color apart in terms of their race you cannot just tell their faith there may be some distinguishing factors in terms of what they are wearing but then again you cannot and i think that has definitely instilled this fear in people um from what i know from what i'm talking to about talking to it with my friends and family um they just they are just concerned about going back to india because a lot of them wanted to travel to meet their families and i know so many cancel their tickets out of fear of you know not being taken back losing their jobs um so there is this fear and i think that is largely because um because of the kind of atmosphere and the kind of environment trump has created with his campaigns with with his words and the fact that he wants to put america first so obviously people like us people who are on h1 or on green card they're considered second class citizens and they will feel that insecurity and one of the reasons i would like to point out trump was voted was because he promised jobs to people to such people to such people who um who were against immigration who felt that immigrants were taking away their jobs um and eventually he was voted into power by people because they thought he's going to bring back those jobs i don't know if that's going to happen but um seemingly they feel that by throwing immigrants out those jobs are going to be available for them well that's of course a warped logic uh, and i think a lot of the american media is calling him out on that harish bijur very quickly i don't have much time so i want to come to you very quickly harish uh, and then i'll end with pramit pal chaudhry 261 documented incidents of hate or hate crime since election day election day 8 november i believe you very quickly harish uh, and then i'll end with pramit pal chaudhry 261 documented incidents of hate or hate crime since election day election day 8 november i believe now out of those 26.8% were against jewish people anti semitism which trump has uh, really uh, he hasn't come out strongly enough against that uh, even his uh, administration uh, was uh, was at sixes at sevens trying to say that they were but the, they couldn't convince anyone 22% against black people uh, 13% against lgbtq community 11 against muslims 10% against latinos and 14.9% against other groups so if you're a minority no matter which kind uh, in america right now it's a very uncertain time and there are no two ways about it You know the key issue would be there is no archetypal american you can actually describe who is an american can you draw his picture can you tell me how tall he is can you tell me what is the color of his hair uh, what must he sport facial hair this that etc so i think there is a key issue on that because the american today is a very myriad kind of a persona and in every society there is a solid core there is a fringe around it and outside that is what i would call the lunatic fringe and within this lunatic fringe is where hate crimes occur because people who are dispossessed people who don't have jobs people who are on dole they need a reason they need an excuse they need to blame someone today they are blaming the immigrant i think president trump needs to say don't blame the immigrant anymore blame me i am the president of this country and i'm going to take care of you i'm going to carry all of you together with me oh, i think that needs to be the status of this presidency under donald trump oh, somehow i don't see donald trump saying that ever but uh, we can hope of course uh, vivek karju wants to come in and then we'll end with pramit go ahead the vivek uh, i thought just one sentence yes just one sentence look i think the qu the question was asked who is an american let's face it in america a majority of the white caucasians do believe that they represent quintessentially america maybe on the west coast and on the eastern seaboard among the more enlightened americans there is a different view but if you go to middle america to the bible belt certainly they identify themselves the white identify themselves as, as americans and the others are there but they are the core of america let's not forget this of course no i agree this with you i agree with you and that's the problem obama a black person no, becoming the president no 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 so called white white lash that came up van jones i think the senior commentator he he said white lash and suddenly he was the biggest villain around but i believe there is an element of that to it well definitely but keep in mind as i said the class element is also important 20% of the people who voted for barack obama also voted turned around and yeah. voted for trump yeah 
and their primary reason was they felt that they had not received the economic benefits they'd expected from Obama. Mm. Uh, and second, if you were a college-educated white man, a uh, white person, you voted overwhelmingly for Hillary Clinton. Yeah. It was a very clear class division between working class and middle class white Americans. So it's not a complete uh, breakdown, uh, but there is definitely an issue in which, as, as Mr. Karcher has correctly said, a core group of Americans who see themselves, and Americans sometimes, the demographers call them the Jacksonian Democrats, mm -hmm. uh, believe that their country is no longer, there's no, they are no longer the beneficiaries of their country's economic or political strength, uh, and therefore now have been looking for an outlet, and that's gone to, ironically, a man who is a uh, billionaire uh, and who has a Jewish son-in-law and daughter. Absolutely, as married to an immigrant himself. Yes. Um, that, of course, uh, is another irony. Uh, a Trump presidency is full of ironies. We, of course, are hoping that no such incidents, or at least as little as, uh, as possible, the such incidents uh, uh, will happen in the future. Uh, unfortunately, uh, an Indian has died, uh, one is injured, and one American, uh, white American, uh, has been injured trying to save those two Indians. I think there's a silver lining there somewhere, uh, although I'm having a hard time finding it. Thank you uh, all for being with us. Uh, uh, Stephanie Kajero, Vivek Kadju, Harish Bijur, Sanjay Puri, Ramit Pal Chaudhary, and uh, Zinia Devan. Thank you for joining us on The Nation at Nine. We'll take a quick break right now. When we come back, issues facing our country right now, Sanskari sensors. That's after the break.